Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, here with a setup guide and the Crucial T710 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD. I'm going to talk to you about the setup and installation of this drive, and I'm also going to highlight some important things that you need to know about the difference between using it on an AMD setup or Intel setup with a Z890 motherboards, for example, where it won't run as fast, so it's pretty important to have that notice, and I'll show you what I mean in a little while. But first, for the installation, you're going to need to find a port on your motherboard which works with Gen 5, and it's important to make sure you've got a motherboard that supports this. It's usually the top slot right near the CPU. You need to remove the heat sink that's up there and any stickers above and below it to release the thermal pads, but keep the stickers on the drive itself seat that drive into the slot then replace the heat shielding over the top to make sure it cools properly and it's really important to know that now some motherboards like this gigabyte board don't have very good heat shields and you have to remove them instead with a screw which might mean it's a little bit more complicated to install but the logic is basically the same depending on the motherboard you're using it's either a clip or a screw holding the heat shield in place and then the drive just slots in underneath with basically the same logic. It pushes into the port and then clicks down into place using the little clip in place there. Sometimes you might need an M2 screw to secure it to the motherboard, but most modern ones have a little plastic clip and then you need to put the heat shield back. Now you can obviously do this once the motherboard's already installed into your system. Just make sure it's powered off and unplugged first of all then remove the heat shield from it and go about the installation process. Notice with this tough gaming motherboard that the heat shield is particularly thick and large. And this is actually very helpful for a Gen 5 drive like this because they can get very hot. And when they do get very hot, they won't run as fast. So actually having a really big heat shield is very beneficial. Remove the stickers covering the thermal pads below the port and also the ones on top of it so where the heat shield sits back on top of the drive and then just slot that in and push it into place it's important to make sure the thermal pads have good contact because they'll help with the cooling and you'll see this can make quite a bit of difference i'd also recommend if you don't have a large heat shield like this for your motherboard that you get an aftermarket one to help with it now for the setup of the installation of the drive in Windows. If you haven't got Windows installed, I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. But I'm assuming for the second that you're using this as an additional drive in your system and just adding it in. So in Windows, you'll probably find that the drive isn't immediately recognized. If you open File Explorer, you'll find that the drive isn't there. So I've got a couple of other drives there, but these are 2.5 inch SSDs and a different NVMe drive. So I can see that my drive isn't recognized immediately. What you need to do is to open the start menu and then search for disk management, create and format hard drive partitions. When you do that, this tool should pop up and you'll see it says initialize disk is recognized. There's a new drive in there and it basically is initializing it. You'll see it comes up with a little black bar on it down the bottom there. So we need to right click on it and click new simple volume and then go about the process of essentially quickly formatting it, assigning it a drive letter and giving it a name. This process will then mean that it will then be recognized by Windows Explorer and you'll be able to use it. You can see now that it's popped up within Windows Explorer. So it's now possible to access that really easily and to use it. Now I'd recommend downloading a couple of tools, Hardware Info 64 and Crystal Dismark. I'll leave links to those in the description. These tools allow you to see useful info and to test the speed of your drive. First of all, you can see in Hardware Info 64 that it's recognized here as the drive CT2000 T710 SSD. That's the one we want to look at. Under the sections in here with the NVMe drives, you can find the relevant drive and you get a bit more data on it. So it's an NVMe drive and it's got X4 lanes running at 32 gig of transfers a second. That is what we want to see in terms of data there. If you click on the host control information page below that, you can see it's PCIe version 5 and it's running at the maximum bandwidth of times 4. So that's 4 lanes, which is what it should have. And it's given us the right amount of speed there. So on paper, Hardware Info says it should run properly. But I'd recommend using Crystal Disk Mark as a test. But before that, have a quick look here. You'll see maximum temperature we want to look out for is 88 degrees you don't want it getting too hot if you use crystal disk mark and copy the settings that i've selected from the drop down and then select your drive that you want to test you can then click all and run some tests on it i'd recommend using hardware info sensor mode to basically keep an eye on the temperatures and i've got task manager on the left so i can see 
a read write speeds and a drive under load. Crystal Disk Mark is a benchmarking tool that basically allows you to test the drive. It will basically mimic real world performance in terms of the movement of small and larger files onto the drive back and forth. And it gives you an idea of whether the drive's running at the right speed or not. You can see here when it's finished, I've got 14,000 megabytes a second. Read speed is the maximum, 13,000 is the right. That's actually pretty good for this drive and what we'd expect for a Gen 5 drive as well. You can see that it got up to 80 degrees C maximum during the testing, but was averaging around 65. So it's not getting near the maximum temperatures there, which is really good. But you do need to make sure you've got a good heat shield for it. Now I've set it up into an Intel build. So this is the Z890 instead. So this is a Intel CPU on a different motherboard. And you'll see that this has basically the same logic. So it's got a PCIe Gen 5 drive slot on it and it's installed into there. And also this is exactly the same drive. And as you can see, Hardware Info says it's the same. It's 32 gig of answers per second and it's Gen 5 and it's got four lanes. However, what you'll see is it actually won't run at the maximum speed. As I showed earlier in the video, if you run the same test with Crystal Disk Mark, you'll find that it doesn't go as fast. And this is because of the nature of the Intel platform at the moment on the Z890 setup that you can't get above 12,000 into the proper range of what we should be getting from this crucial drive. So it won't go all the way up to 14,000. It's actually limited lower down than that. So this is why this drive isn't as beneficial on a Intel build at the moment. You're better off with AMD if you want to get maximum speed out of it, which is a shame, but there it is. You can see I'm still getting 12,000 megabytes a second, but it's not the 14 we were just getting on AMD a minute ago, so it's not as good, which is pretty interesting. And there's not much you can do about it, but you'll also notice the temperature is a little bit hotter here at 83 degrees, despite the chunkier heat shield, but it is a smaller case. When it comes to real world transfers of files and use of the drive, you'll find you probably won't get up to those maximum speeds or anywhere near it. You can see me here moving large video files around, for example, the speeds are nowhere near as fast as they were a second ago with Crystal Disk Mark. So using benchmarking tools is a good idea to give you a working idea of the maximum speed, but you'll likely not get close to that. Depending on what you're doing, if you're moving smaller files or if you're installing things, you'll find it swifter, but it's worth doing a mixture of both these things. The idea here is just making sure that the system is working properly because there are things that could impact the number of lanes that the drive's got, and I've done a separate video on that, and that will then negatively impact the speed overall. So if you notice using Crystal Disk Mark that your speed is half what it should be, for example, that's a big indicator of something much more significantly wrong with the setup of your motherboard or settings in the BIOS that needs to be tweaked in order for the drive to run at the max speed. Now let's take a look at what you want to do if you're going to install Windows directly onto the drive. First of all, you're gonna need a separate machine. On a separate PC, search for Windows Creation Tool and we're looking to create a Windows Media Creation Tool. And so you go over to this website and then you want this one, create a Windows 11 Media Installation. And then you open up the download, run the said download file. You need to have a separate USB stick for this, obviously, and a machine that you can do this on in the first place. Although you can do this on a phone. I've got a separate video about how to do that. And make sure you've got the right selections. And then you can see USB flash drive. It needs to be at least eight gigabytes. And then click there. You can see that I've got a USB drive already set for this and plugged into this machine. And then you're basically going to run this tool and until it progresses and does a Windows media installation on that thumb drive. What you'll then do is insert that drive into the new PC. So pop the USB drive into the back of your motherboard and get ready to go about the installation process. So putting this in will mean that your PC will then try and boot from it and then go about the installation setup for Windows. So you should find when you turn it on, you'll get the BIOS screens loading up and then eventually you'll get onto this Windows screen. From there, you then need to just go through the various options to go about the installation. So select your location, in my case, United Kingdom, click to install now, and then wait for it to get to the next stage. There are a lot of different steps to this, but what I would do now is put in, I don't have a product key unless you do have it to hand because you can always put it in later on in Windows. Click on Windows 11 Home, click to accept 
that process. On to the next stage, click Custom, Install Windows Only. Then you should find your single drive in there. Click on that to install onto it and it will start to copy the files and go about the installation process for this setup onto this drive. Now this can take quite some time, so you will have to be patient and wait for it to go through the various steps of doing this. But eventually you should find that you get to this point possibly where you need Ethernet or Wi-Fi but it won't let you progress any further. At this stage, you'll probably have to head over to the manufacturer's website for your motherboard to download the Wi-Fi drivers for it. So in this case, I'm going over to Asus's website for this tough gaming BTF motherboard I'm using. Go to the driver and tools section and then look for the LAN and wireless drivers and download both of them because we're going to install both of them onto the system. Copy them over onto a USB drive. It's worth noting you can do this on your phone as an alternative if you don't have a spare laptop or other machine that you can use. And then we'll go about the next process. So make sure you plug in your Ethernet cable into the back of the machine and also the wireless dongle. This is an antenna which plugs into the back and it's very important to plug this in otherwise you won't get a good signal for your Wi-Fi. So you plug that into the Wi-Fi and set that up nicely. And then what you want to do is to make sure that the USB drive that we copied the drivers onto is plugged into the motherboard as well. And then you should find what you can do then is on this page, basically you want to hit Shift and F10 on your keyboard and that will open up Command Prompt on the window where you're prompted to get connected to the internet. From there you can type Explorer into this window make sure you click on it first because you'll find it won't work otherwise but then type explorer on your keyboard and hit enter what that will do is it'll open up windows explorer and from there you can navigate to the usb drive or to your phone wherever you've installed on there and basically find the files for the wireless drivers and go about installing them you can do this for the wireless drivers and for the LAN drivers. So just run the programs to install the drivers onto your system and then you'll be able to finish the process of installing Windows. So this can be one thing that can be problematic during the installation process of Windows on a new drive. So hopefully this will help you get around it. Just remember it's Shift and F10 to open up Command Prompt and then you basically go in to connect to your Wi-Fi and your Ethernet you should find they're both nicely set up then and you can carry on the process of installation. And once you've finished, obviously you'll be able to then happily use your machine without any issues and download everything else that you need. Hopefully I've helped you out with this drive. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and check out the links in the description to more related content that you might find useful, especially if you're having problems with your drive not running at max speed. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.